pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening. Jason and Frank are zooming in today, and I'd like to ask if there is a motion to approve the agenda. I move to approve the agenda. Is there a second? I'd second it. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Motion. Aye. Thank you. Okay, we are now going to administer the oath of office for two of our three new student board representatives, Alexander and Cami. I'd ask you to join me out front. How about right here? Okay. You're going to raise your right hand and we'll your name. you'll say your own name. Okay. I, I, I Alexander Tavoli, do solemnly swear, do do solemnly swear, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the state of Washington to support the Constitution of the United States. For the United States, States and the state of Washington, and, state of Washington and, will faithfully perform, and will faithfully perform the duties of school board director, the duties of school board director, student representative, student representative of the Prosser School District, of the Prosser School District, number 116, number 116, in the county of Benton, in the county of Benton, state of Washington, state of Washington, according to the best of my ability. According to the, the best, best of my ability. Very good. I will ask you to come over here and sign. I did the student mm -hmm. <coughs> So let's see. Alex, you here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our signature mm -hmm. or just? Yep, no signature. Okay. Yes. We are now going to acknowledge and applaud our Prosser School District retirees and appreciate them. Wow. So we have some here tonight. <laughs> um, so um, what we like to do is um, each one of them, for those of you who are watching or whatever, get a plaque and it talks about their years of service. And so to honor everybody, I'm going to do those. So. This is presented to Jennifer Kloss for 18 years of service, all right? We have one for Sandra Haddow for 30 years of service, quite a big deal. Joe Bressberg for 21 years of service. I'm trying to see if any of them were online, <laughs> so that's it. Uh, for Terry Beal for eight years of service, for Valerie Baker. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you can grasp this or not. 40 years of service. <laughs> it's amazing to me. Um, Ruth Zedeker for 18 years of service. Payan Wadups for 30 years of service. Lori Riggs for 31. And Ray Ledesma for 13. We do want to thank everybody for their years of service. We will make sure they get their plaques. Um, one thing about doing this the week after graduation, I think many are, you know, week after school gets out, I think everybody's kind of like, I'm out. <laughs> so thank you very much for allowing us to honor them. Um, we also have cookies and water and so forth. Please help yourself. 
Um, um, let's take just a minute. You want to grab a bottle of water or a cookie or something? Um, Selena will open them up for us and we'll go from there. I'm going to go get a cookie. <laughs> I'm going to get a cookie. How about you? Okay, Frank and Jason and anybody else out there, we're going to enjoy these cookies while you're gone. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Item number D, we have two information items. First being PSD administration office moved to OPHS June 20th. And I just took a bite of cookie. Let me swallow. Um, we just want to make sure the public and everybody knows that we're <clears throat> officially moving to the old Prosser High School. So 1500 Grant Avenue, approximately the 20th or 21st will be closed down and we will be at the old Prosser High School, um, you'll see quite a bit going on. And when I talk about it in my report, I say we're not having anyone over for dinner until about the 15th of July. <laughs> and what I mean by that is there's going to be lots of boxes and movement and whatever, but our first official day where our phones will be in and that's where we'll be receiving guests will be the 20th. Um, so if anybody's listening, we want to make sure you understand and give us a little grace those first couple of weeks while we put boxes and stuff away. Um, we're working on our address change that'll go out on our website, a notification out through social media and so forth. But we just want to let you know, technically June 20th will be our first day there, even though I know it's going to look like a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, summer hours for the administration office. Um, so the PDF is attached to your documents. We um, are committed to certain hours. We try and allow our office staff. It is a smaller staff because we rotate um, summer vacations for them and so forth, but we are committed to an eight to four schedule. Mm -hmm. Protocol for addressing the board. Do we have visitors signed in? We do. And then anybody online as well? We need to read the protocol for addressing the board. You may present a concern to the board during the time reserved for hearing public. If this is the case, we ask that you, prior to the start of the meeting, sign in, noting the topic you intend to address to the board. Come to the microphone and state your name. Do not reflect adversely on the political or economic view, ethnic background, character, or motives of any individual. Do keep your comments concise, non-emotional, and brief. The board is interested in hearing your concerns and your compliments, too. It's best to call the comments a couple of days before the meeting. If this isn't possible, you can ask the board president to recognize you during the hearing section. We have Noah Dempsey listed. It's weird having to write my name down to speak now. <laughs> okay. Um, I actually wrote it down because usually I speak off the fly, but I wanted to get everything down. Um, good evening. I wanted to share a little message and um, share some dialogue with the board. Um, as many of you know, I graduated um, this past weekend, and while I was walking across the stage to receive my diploma, um, well, my diploma cover, which is a symbolic image to show how much I have grown as a person, I was told by board president Jason Rayner, who's not here at the moment, that I needed to, and I quote, grow up sometime. In response to my polite refusal to shake hands with Mr. Rayner and Mr. Wyman, this statement hit me as a little bit of a surprise, but I expected nothing less from a man who clearly has not grown up himself. To find the need to make this comment after I took a personal choice to not shake hands on moral grounds. I chose not to shake either board member's hands as my convictions and morals would not allow me to show alignment with individuals directly opposed to my values. Individuals who weaponize race, religion, and sexuality, among others, have no... You know I don't want to interrupt you after you, you do have your three minutes, but I want to remind you of the policy thing. You can discuss, but you can't make comments regarding people. Okay. You can definitely reflect 
an event to happen. Okay, that, that was it talking about people. I'm sorry to interrupt you. You're all good. Um, these people have no place in my heart, mind, and especially not in my hand. To conform to this social norm would have been a direct rejection of my morals, and therefore I chose not to shake. And I make this, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, sorry. I have grown up. Growing up is knowing that you have free will. Growing up is not conforming with social norms. Growing up is knowing that you can deny someone while still being respectful. It is not making sly comments under your breath. Going, uh, growing up is learning to accept people, not subjugate them. Growing up is sticking to what you believe in and holding true to your promises. So in conclusion, I believe I have, in fact, grown up. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Is there anybody else that signed in? Okay. Move on. Student representative report. Um, I'm covering athletics. So there's a lot going on with summer fall and what's going on. So football is doing their yearly Boise camp, the 10th to the 13th, I believe, and have been doing their 707 tournaments, getting ready for the season. Girl soccer has been practicing on the normal, and we begin our games at the end of the month. Volleyball is doing their Monday league and is regularly practicing, and boys and girl basketball has put on a basketball camp for K through 8th grade and around 110 kids have shown up. That's all I have for you today. Alexander, do you have a report? I do not. Okay, thank you, and good job so far at your first meeting. Yeah. Okay, we have quite a few action items, and the first one is GoFan Digital Ticket Sales Agreement. Jack. Yes. <laughs> You're gonna sit up here for a while, I think. No, I'm teasing you. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. First one. So first item talking about is GoFan digital ticketing. Um, the reason for wanting to switch from what we're currently using, which is hometown ticketing, to GoFan is to align not only with what our CWAC league is doing, every single team within our league is GoFan ticketing, but also to align with the WIAA which is all postseason events is ran through GoFan. So my light bulb went on and was thinking, what's the best way to help our fans have an easy transition between app to app? And I thought there was a bridge in the whole system when us, when we were using hometown ticketing, when GoFan's the main application to use for online ticketing. So my request is that we switch over from hometown ticketing to GoFan ticketing to not only align with what the CWAC league is doing, but also to align with what the state is doing. Is there a cost or variance in that? <laughs> is the percentage, it's the same, is it not? The percentage is the same. And that, so in the contract, a dollar per ticket, you buy it online, if you get like a season's pass, I think it's $5 per ticket. Correct. And that goes on to the purchaser. Goes on to the purchaser. But we will still be selling in-person tickets as well okay. so we'll have the option of getting online ticketing and also in-person ticketing so those that don't want to pay the fee they still have the traditional way of paying uh, with cash and this includes some hardware is that right so when we do sign up they give us all the hardware okay. tell me how that works so the hardware is they're going to give us an ipad that has lte on it which is internet on it um so it allows us to scan the tickets right there well, it's not necessarily scanning, it's touching the touching the screen, which allows the ticket to be marked as a bot ticket. Okay. And you can do it from a iPad that they give us, but we also have another phone that we use for athletics that I can download the app as well and use that. So we have, we can hit two different entry points, our top gate at the stadium, the top gate and the bottom gate. And then also in our facility here at the high school, we have our bottom gate and top gate that we use for basketball as well. You have to have the app or can you go on go online at a home computer and print out a ticket? Yeah. You can scan? Correct. Okay. And what's the turnaround for getting the money back to the school district? It's I think it's immediately isn't it? It's immediately. Yeah. Oh yep. yeah, so it, it gets deposited directly into um, no delay. No delay. It's probably in all sincerity <laughs> probably faster than our cash system. Mm -hmm. Jason or Frank, do you guys, or Michelle, do you guys have any questions? 
all my questions. <laughs> Tammy, Alex, I do not have a question. I just, I think it makes sense to me. Well, is there a motion to approve? So, so move. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Motion carried. Yes, and also BSN Sports Reward Program. So I did this at my last place of employment, which is signing a Nike uh, Rewards All School deal. Um, it's not necessarily a contract that's going to bind us for the July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2029. If we don't like what the reward the rewards are giving us, we can end our agreement with them. Um, I reached out to Grandview School District, uh, Ellensburg School District, and those athletic programs also have Nike all school deals. Um, the reason behind this is we can get a lot more equipment at a discounted price uh, once we meet that threshold of buying a certain amount of equipment for the year through bsn we can have uh, rebated discount prices so we can get bleachers for stadiums that might need them we can get extra equipment um kind of the world's our oyster per se depending on how much our programs do spend per year i reached out to all head coaches got their opinion to see if they wanted to be a nike school all of them resounding said yes, which was a pretty easy sell to me. Um, but with buying Nike uniforms or being on a Nike all school deal, uh, the only programs that have to be outfitted in it are the varsity programs. All the sub varsity programs, you can buy whatever other uniform you'd like at a much cheaper rate than a Nike would be. <clears throat> can you explain the um, when you approached me about this? Mm -hmm. One of the things was like your C squad or your something, um, a summer program, all those different kinds of things. And that was a concern I had. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't um, school wide. I mean, because that would be quite expensive. Yeah, it's just for the high school. And right. then the only thing, the other piece that we did was the, um, if you read, to end the agreement, there's just an, a, a letter that says to end the agreement. It, there's no terminate, there's no financial clause in the termination. The, the duration of this agreement is five years. Right. July 1st. <clears throat> but we, if we want to end, exit the agreement, we can exit it with just a letter. Yeah, it's not a binding contract, it's just an agreement. And that's exactly what they told me last year. Mm -hmm. You can help us with that. Um, my only concern, so, would be that it's it's a new program to us, and it is five years, and it looks like a contract. It's a contract. Um, okay. I would, you know, that's what they truly intend. They would hopefully be amenable to putting language in, you know, thirty days notice, ask for sixty days, so we're not bound yep. by that. How much money do we usually spend per year on items like this? On uniforms altogether or just, so this involves uniforms, balls, bags, bat packs, everything's included on this rebated deal. My guess is we, anywhere from 20 to 40, my guess is, is how much our athletic programs spend on equipment and uniforms and all that other stuff from BSN. Is that the equipment and uniforms that would fall into this category, correct not the lower level uni uniforms yeah so any so just uniforms for the varsity programs and again if this is something we don't want to do it's totally fine i just think it would be a good opportunity for us to kind of get some bigger items at a discounted price especially with the amount of money that some programs spend on uniforms and equipment does it change the rotation uniform rotation at all no how come it says specifically that cheerleading is excluded from the total what's the basis for that so cheer per nike doesn't really go through like we use a totally different vendor for our cheer uniforms it's actually varsity academy or something like that so it's nothing involved with this uh, michelle hall kind of has her own thing and that's a lot around a lot of different high schools, they don't go through BSN for that. They go through varsity. 
I believe it also has something to do with, um, now this sounds strange, but if you buy a women's medium size short for basketball, it's women's medium size short for basketball, where a cheer uniform is length and measured and sized, right? So I don't know that Nike does a lot with cheer and their product is probably very expensive. Probably more comparable to like a band uniform. Yes. Like very yes. Need to order items yes, exactly. Product. You're saying exactly correct. Would we, is there anything that we buy from local businesses that we would not, no longer purchase? So from? that, I also reached out to them about that and they said, for example, when our teams go to state, uh, girls and boys basketball, they buy like t-shirts from a local vendor in town and they said that's totally fine. So I just wanted to make sure we protected our own people here first before we do anything that's involved with something corporate like this. 30 to 40 is accurate. Dollars. Okay. Frank and Jason, did you have any questions? Alexander, Tammy, any questions? Michelle, Jason, if you're trying to speak, we cannot hear you. Or Frank. I don't. I don't think. Um... You know, I, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't like being locked into one, one company like that, but Nike does have quality products. I mean, I mean, I guess the questions that Elisa asked probably answered my questions. Um, so, you know, I, I guess, I guess if we're not damaging our local uh, businesses, you know, and we don't, we, we know the wording in the contract can be such that we can get out of it. I would I don't think there's any, I have any opposition to it. I I will only speak from my, my tenure at past establishments. It was a very, very good deal for other district. The rewards benefits. Um, it's, I see Rick shaking his head also. Many, many districts use it in the rewards benefits. Um, it's, I can compare it to the being a Pepsi school and Pepsi buys the signs and puts up the signs. And I think if you read those contracts, we're like in 50 year agreements or something with Pepsi, you know what I'm saying? But the benefits of those types of partnerships are a good thing. And they are not intentionally trying to hurt small business or small things. I've never ran into um, when the schools produce their own t-shirts and their student stores or things like that. That's never been a cause for concern. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't have this, Jason. I don't have any other questions. I think uh, Lisa asked all the ones I had, so I appreciate it. My, my suggestion would be we table it to our next meeting to have that language added, you know, a 30 or 60 day, mm -hmm. you know, out clause that, you know, if things aren't working, we can leave without. Okay. I mean, there's no, there's no damages necessarily. We wouldn't have to pay anything to get out, out of the five-year contract, but mm -hmm. I would feel better about it. Sure. Mm -hmm. So a motion. Yes. <laughs> so we got to always think about that. So how do we do that? We need to make the motion to. At least did oh, you make a motion to table it? What did you say, Jason? Uh, I think we need to make a motion to postpone. That's correct. Instead of table. Oh, you're okay. You know yeah, that is correct. We'll postpone to our next regular board meeting to take action on this item. BSS. I would, okay. I would second, second that. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jackson. I Thank you. I think you're. You're good. I'm good. Thank and you. and Jackson, just because of it being summertime and time off, if that is in there, I wouldn't think you would need to come back unless you there was something you needed to expand on. Okay, sounds good. Paulette, item three, the 2023-24 CTE four-year plan. Good evening. Yes, so it's it's the, that time of year where I give you the highlights of the four-year plan. CTE has additional requirements on it that the that basic ed doesn't have. And one of those is each program has to have a four-year plan. And then from that four-year plan from each program, 
we develop a district wide four year plan. And so it's just kind of highlights of what's going on in the pro in the programs. It's a four year plan, but really it's the first two years that are most important because we report on what happened this year and what we intend to do next year because three or four years out, things change. And so that's why it's called a plan, not a contract, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like you mentioned earlier. Um, they, they often often change. And so I'm going to give you some of the highlights. I know you had a copy of the document and it's fairly extensive. And I'll give you some of the highlights from each of the programs from this year. Um, agriculture was able to get a grant. And with that, they were able to purchase five new welders and update some lab equipment. Um, in the future, with the addition of Samantha Graff for our, for our uh, new ag teacher, we look at the opportunities of adding some courses that we've wanted to add because she comes with the training and she comes with the background and she comes with the experience to, to increase our program offerings in agriculture. Business and marketing started Mustang style this year and which they got reported or someone reported they got the gold standard for the bit for the store. And next year they're going to expand into um, school spirit type things like the foam fingers and things like that. Um, they're going to get a display case and try to get more school spirit. And so that's the plan for, for the retail store. Family and consumer science, this year we updated uh, the middle school kitchen. There was a lot of equipment that was outdated, broken, needed replaced. And so we did that. Um, and in fact, we just ordered some new prep tables uh, for, for, for the kitchen. And then the teaching bridge was the first year that we had that. And we had uh, two students that, um, well, we had 12 students in the program, but we had two students that um, earned or, or earned the ability to go to uh, WSU's teaching teaching program at University at uh, Tri-Cities. Um, health science, we hired Nate Conway to be our sports medicine teacher and athletic trainer. So that's gonna be a very beneficial thing. Uh, already those classes are full with requests. And he just got he just got back from his wedding. So we're going to meet next week and get the curriculum planned and get everything in line for that. Uh, STEM, really, when you start a new program, you, you're kind of like, how's this going to go? Is this going to be good? Um, we, we kind of thought STEM was going to, and we're in our second year, full second year of STEM, and that program has taken off. Um, in fact, the we had to reduce sections because we only have so many sections that we can teach. And then next year we're adding um, another computer science course to the curriculum, which will be aligned with Walla Walla also. But yeah, it's really, and then we also got a grant for, for the STEM program through Project Lead the Way. And that allows us to update our tables to be more workable for the projects. It allowed uh, us to recoup some of the cost of implementing the program. Um, then let's hear what else. Uh, we increased our dual credit offerings. Again, we added accounting, quick in, engineering design and computer engineering and computer science. And then next year we're gonna be offering college in the high school for engineering design, robotics and personal finance. Any questions on the plan? Any questions from board? Nope. I love hearing that your STEM program is taking off and that it's growing. Yeah, and we're looking at the middle school. It's, it's strictly robotics. And I've been working with Kaysen and Ryan. It's like, maybe we should diversify that a little bit and get some of the engineering and some of the coding in earlier down there to, to expand the offerings there also. Anything from Alexander or Ken? Okay. Alex is in like every program. Is that right? <laughs> What's your favorite? Kate. My favorite CT class I've taken. Uh, that was the, the uh, CAD class that I had with Mr. Smith. Yeah, in fact, the other day I asked, I asked Alex, do you have any basic ed classes? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're in the program and you can come off. Is there a motion? I move to approve the 2023-24 CTE four-year plan. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Number four.
purchase of a CTE Suburban. Yes, that's me again. Yes, it is. So I've been working with Delise and, and Amy. Uh, we have we have a sound button in the CTE program. And so we want to purchase our own Suburban to, to help with, with transportation. Sometimes we take two Suburbans somewhere, but one has to hurry up and get back. So we'd like to have our own Suburban that will be used by all departments to transport students to different events, field trips, competitions, as well as can be used by teachers to travel to conferences. Are there any questions? Do you want to explain just how this works? Oh, sorry, Jason. Go nope, go ahead. I'm listening. We want to talk about the many. Let's just be real open about that and how that works. And Okay, so CTE is self-funded. We're, we're, we, we generate our own money based on our enrollment. And nine, the district gets to take 5% of that in what's called indirects. They just like take 5% and, and do whatever they do. And then along with our funding, we also contribute to um, office staff. We con contribute to counselors. We contribute uh, a portion to many other things throughout the school. And then, then of course, we pay for all, all salaries in the CTE department. Myself, all the teachers, uh, we pay for all of our curriculum, all of our equipment that we don't get with grants, and we self-manage our money. And so this year, we have funds that would allow us to, to uh, buy the Suburban. And so CTE, when I say it's totally self-funded, we take we have never taken any money from the school district. In fact, we, have contrib we contribute to the district. And that's why vehicles are often done at the end of the year right when that fiscal yeah. part is done and we're sure everything's secure, we know exactly where we're gonna be. Because you're using your recovery money, correct? Yes. Yes. What does that mean exactly? So recovery, recovery money is if we don't spend it, it goes back. Okay. Oh, well, yes. Well, that back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so along with this, we still, we, we'll still have a carryover for next year. But so you can only tool. carry over so much, so. Yep. There's a tool in OSPI that he uses, and he'll go in and, and put in his expenditures in there, and it'll populate what his carryover is and what his recovery is. And I probably use it too much. <laughs> but you're on top <laughs> of it, so it's great. Do you have additional recovery money beyond this vehicle? Yes, we'll have a carry, we'll have carryover. Oh, no. Um, the recovery will be spent beyond, yeah, there, there's additional funds beyond this vehicle that'll, that'll be used, or additional items that'll be purchased with the recovery money. And we'll probably get a little bit into our carryover. We don't want to give $1 back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll even buy a box of pens if we have one. <laughs> My question or comment was, it looks like the sale is going to go through Spec and Sunnyside versus Spec and Prosser. And yes. Is it possible to have it go through Spec and Prosser? Because the sales tax goes to wherever city the sale occurred. And it would be nice to have that sales tax stay in Prosser as opposed to going to Disney. But... Um, th that would be an Amy oh, question. That would be an Amy question. I need to ask Amy about that one. Yeah, I think that's that's where she got the quote from. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure. They're the ones that have the Suburban. They may have to deal or trade it to Spec of Prosser so that we can buy it from Spec of Prosser. But the, but, but the, the I see you're PO sending actually, email, the right? PO yes. is actually made out to spec of Prosser. Oh, then that's I don't see that. The PO was generated yesterday or the day before. So that's the quote. I approved it. Okay. The PO. I, I it is for Prosser. It's for Prosser. Oh, yeah. Then perfect. Thank you. But we will double check. Yeah, I'm going to email Amy right now. Thank you. Is there a motion? Hang on, I forgot to ask Tammy or Alexander. Hold well, on, I had a question. Oh, sorry. I apologize, Nathan. Go on. Hey, uh, just out of curiosity, is the the price for the suburban is that part of the state bid for vehicles, or is it just a you know basic purchase direct from a dealership? So there wasn't. Uh, Amy didn't have said that there wasn't any available through the state, and so then she had to go to a dealer. She got a few quotes. Yeah, she had three quotes. And spec actually okay. came down from their original quote. Okay, thank you. Then I move to approve the purchase of the Suburban. Is there a second? 
I would second it. You all in favor? Please say aye. Aye. Any aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. <laughs> all right, item five. Eastern Washington University College and the High School for 24-25. This is a continuation of contracts that we've had with Eastern. We have to fill one, do one each year. Um, I did happen to see Deanna today and just double check to make sure there was no changes in this. Um, this is our same continuing contract. It's We just have to sign them each year. And will we have someone taking the speaker's place who we just yes. Yes. recognized for a Casey is. Kate, oh, Casey. Any questions? I was curious if we're going to add any more classes because there really is only a few classes listed. Here. So we have lots of schools. So we have Eastern and we have Central and we have University of Washington, WSU. WSU. So it's all like of them, adults, right? yes. <laughs> and that is based on their acceptance programs. Um, what they offer in college in the high school because they have to support it also. And so those are all college-based transcripts. So just because you only see those classes with Eastern, that's only what Eastern offers, not what all of our college and the high school offers. Yeah, for example, the CTE ones are all through CWE. Does Eastern offer more than this? And we just don't have the... I'm going to have to take, I'm going to, I'm going to have to table that to Deanna and really ask that question and we can make notes of it to ask Deanna. They do, but I'll give you an example that I ran into with Central Washington University and history. I'm just going to give you an example. Each department inside its own university has their program requirements. So I'll give you an example of history at Central and they're not in this discussion, but Central Washington University will not accept even a master's in teaching history. You have to have a master's or a doctorate in history. So they want to make sure that you are a history major, not a teaching history major. So we could never get CWU to accept our history. Does that make sense? So sometimes each of the programs inside them... so. English at CWU doesn't care if you have a, a teaching a master's in teaching uh, English education they'll accept you you don't have to have a master's in English because they're very different types of masters and so that's an example so my answer to you though is I don't know which programs in Eastern have things that we can participate in and ones we can't based on who's on staff at the time how close is that with yeah, that's that's close. And then sometimes uh, the different college programs say we're too full, we can't do any more people, so we're not taking anyone on. Um, Eastern Science is notorious for not taking anyone on, even though they offer it. They haven't taken anyone on in recent years. <laughs> because let's just say the the staffing for managing the college in the high school. Um, is different. So you have to go to their training. You have they monitor your coursework. They come and visit your school. They monitor your grading practices. So if they don't have the capacity to add anyone into those departments that are into those programs, then they would also say no. Even if you had a doctorate. In in my previous district, we had a doctor, a, a teacher that had his doctorate in chemistry, and he he's in his own words. I said, why do you want to teach? You got, you got, you have research. He goes, eh, research isn't that sexy. He goes, teaching is <laughs> fun. <laughs> he, he's a he's a character, but um, so he has his had his doctorate in, in chemistry. Eastern wouldn't take him. They said, no, no, we're not taking him. When, so he couldn't teach chemistry. So I don't know if there are other classes that Eastern could offer us, or if this is all Eastern has for us. And I would have to email you back. I, I would guess that there's more that's just all that we qualify for. Mm -hmm. Is it a standard then for any college in the classroom that the master is in something it, required? It, yes. To teach college in the classroom? Uh, Central in other program areas has loosened up. Mm -hmm. they'll, ex they'll, they'll take ex a certain amount of experience in that it. subject mm -hmm. if you don't have a master's. And it's a little different in things like English and history than it may be in a CTE program because they know that CTE program instructors often have
practical experience versus some of the others wish to have a research-based or um, depth of knowledge, deeper depth of knowledge. So I, it's kind of a roundabout way to say, I truly don't know the answer for Eastern, but those are some examples of different college and high school programs. So as we have added all of these patchwork college mm -hmm. and the high school mm -hmm. programs, um, I think it was Yashini who said something about the transcripts are transcript costs. So we've right. taken on those transcript costs. So they're not a cost to the student. Um, but there is legislative actions that we can talk about as we get closer to leg legislative season about making a universal college in the high school type transcript. So like if you think about all your con like mine, I have a transcript from where I graduated from high school and then I have my central transcript and then I have my WGU transcript and then they all have to be mailed into somewhere. So they're talking about coming up with a college in the high school way that that goes on your Washington State high school transcript, I guess is the easiest way to say that. And then you would have a college transcript as well. I think it's important that students are you know, getting the information that, you know, whether it's your running start school or your college in the classroom, that, you know, you're going to have to get a transcript for all those places. And it's on you to make sure when you enroll in your next educational institution that you are making sure that you apply and get those credits approved. And that, when I talk to, to parents out in the world, that, you know, that the message seems to be that not everybody is getting that information or it's kind of like hit and miss, but. And I think as we do this longer, our teachers, our counselors, and our Mustang period teachers, right, are getting wiser about how that process looks. It's in handbooks and it's the counselors doing it. But it's kind of like if you're the first child in a household to go to college versus the third child to go to college, there's a lot more knowledge going on. So it does take a while for us to know how to. Um, turn, I'm looking at the audience when how to message it. Um, I, you'll hear me talk a lot about vocabulary. When we say transcript, a parent thinks high school transcript. Um, when we say a college transcript, it d does not mean necessarily the same thing. Also, your level of technology use and understanding, because all transcripts are ordered online anymore. You don't call up and pay your $10 in the off finance office and get your transcript. There's, um, have you guys filled it one out lately? There's the, where you order your transcripts from a clearinghouse, uh, trans yes. transcript clearinghouse now. So you all, if I want my transcripts, I call, and I don't, it's not called transcript clearinghouse, but it's basically that. And they get, and I pay them and they get all of my college transcripts for me. So I don't have to do an email to central and an email to WGU, right? I can just do it to transcript clearinghouse. And that's not what it's called, but that's close to what it is. Is that available to students? Yep. Anybody who has a college transcript. Yep. Anybody who has a college transcript. And an example would be if you have a private smaller school, they may not use the transcript clearinghouse, but any of your state colleges that we're using for college in the high school would use the transcript clearinghouse. You want to Google that and see if you can, somebody can tell you something. My friend of mine just used it. Oh. And she was just telling me about it. Yeah, Oscar. Yeah. Or, yeah. I think it's called, it's it's called trans, it's like transcript clearinghouse, but it's something yeah. like that. So all the state, it's a whole different situation. No, it's national. Okay. Yeah. So it's a national state college clearinghouse for transcripts. That's national student clearinghouse transcripts. Oh, there, oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're being accurate. I was pretty close. <laughs> but so it is. So then like any of the bigger colleges, private colleges, I don't know how many of the private colleges are in there, but they're not our college and the high school colleges either. So. Any other discussion? Can I please make a personal comment about yes. our class? Um, okay. So for the past two years, I've been uh, I have taken Ms. Rada's uh, <clears throat> physical conditioning uh, class, which is a uh, college and high school uh, credit class. And for both times, apparently she's been having troubles with getting the students registered into the credit things. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I have not been able to receive my credits for taking that class for those two uh, for 
for taking that class those two times. Selena, will you make note of that, please, so I can follow up with Mr. Bailey and Mrs. Rada? Yeah. Um, after the first time, I talked to my counselor and had her check if it was um, on, like, the schools, like, they do recognize that it was, and she checked, and it was, and, yeah. Okay. She well, just, if you've taken them, you'll get the credits. There's always a solution. Yeah. Um, I did talk to my counselor, and she said that when I took it my sophomore year, and when I was going into my junior year, no, when I took it, no, I talked to Lada after the second try, and she said, oh, because it's now the third try, I can't put it in or something. Okay. We'll yeah. figure, we'll get to the bottom of that. Yeah. Thank you for raising that issue. Yes, because if you don't bring it up, I don't know about it. Yeah, so what is, that makes me think, what is the process for, like, making sure the students get the credit through the appropriate school? They should get an email, just like I would if I was in college and completed the class, and they should be able to go into their central, or I see heads nodding, you should be able to go into central, or you should be able to go into eastern, you have a student ID, you should be able to see your transcript at any time. And she went through parchment. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's and is that what you experienced, Cammie? I see you nodding your head. So I took leadership in teaching academy this year. And that's what we had. We got a school email from Eastern. We got it over that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, when I took physical conditioning, we never went through to like a college website and like signed up to any classes or anything. We just did the class. And okay, I'll look into that. Did something. And as well, I did uh, make sure constantly throughout this year to ask her about that and she just kept on saying that there was a problem. So. Okay. I'll look into it. Yeah. I mean I guess I guess my question has more to do with like who's the person who initiates it with the university? Is it this, like, the, the student teacher. gets an email or does the teacher No, the teacher the starts uh, starts with the roster. Okay. Yes, that's correct. And that's part of their training. Like right now we're doing college and the high school training in the summer. And they get that training and they how to process it. They get their login, upload of rosters, those kinds of things. Yeah. And each university is a little different. So I think that's the other piece. Um, once a teacher learns one system's way, they want to stay with that college. So they're not doing logging into Central and doing it one way and logging into Eastern and doing it a different way. All right. If there's not any further questions or if there are discussion, is there a motion? Um, I move to approve. EWU College in the High School for 24-25. Is there a second? I'd second it. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Number six, is it? Winnaha. Winnaha Group Agreement for Consulting Services. So we had done the resolutions to go out for construction management, right? This is at the contract with Winnaha, um, who is our project manager. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, they're going to, because we're a, these are small individual projects, they're going to contract by the hour, um, different fees based on different person who's doing the work. Um, for example, we have a couple interns that are working for them from different colleges right so we get a very discounted price um for that so this is that contract agreement and this is coming from levy funds. yes this is our capital levy yes thank you are there any questions or comments no questions thank you all right hearing none is there a motion Move to approve Winaha Group Agreement for Consultant Services. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And I forgot to ask our student director. You have thoughts on the consulting agreement before we voted. <laughs> okay. Well, next time. <laughs> Number seven, vouchers and payroll. Are there any questions concerning the vouchers or payroll? Question. Okay. Then we got a 
figure okay. out which number it was. Elise probably knows off the top of her head, and I just was curious what this gas for the oven thing was. It's so expensive, like $48,000. Uh, it's just like gas. It is the gas oven. The gas oven? It's so not that's the, the grant. That's so, It's not the gas for the oven. Yes, it's a so, gas oven. Yeah, so food service like has got a grant for two ovens. She got a grant for two ovens, <laughs> and so we purchased one before, and we just purchased another one. Is that the oven at Riverview? Yes. It's a very special oven. Yes. Very special oven. Yep. That's thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's fully covered. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think, and I think it said, um, wow. Yeah. The way it was written, it was like gas rod or something. Oh, gas roll in oven. It's yeah. Like, gas roll yes. in oven. And I was like, a roll yeah. in that. So that is yes. the way when it, it rolls it. in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can see where that might be a little Definitely. funny. Thank you. You're welcome. Frank or Jason, do you have any questions? No questions. Uh, no, I move to approve vouchers and payroll. Okay. Is there a second? I would second it. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Going to consent items. We have certificated personnel, classified personnel, approval of minutes, and volunteer coaches. We have a motion. I, I would make a motion. motion. I've never had so many motions. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Go ahead. Someone noted that. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> Any opposed? So. Hearing none. Consent items have been approved. Reports. The lead, you are first. Um, okay. So we have April's financials, um, which look really great. Um, as you can see, our revenues are up um, about $2 million and our expenditures are down. Um, we did get a huge tax payment this uh, in April. And then we also got our levy assistance in April as well. Um, so our fund balance is looking a lot better than it was in March. Excellent. There. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Hearing none, we'll go to superintendent's report. Um, I passed it out. Um, I'll send it out, Frank and Jason and Brian and everybody. So you've got just for your records. I'll be as quick as I can here. Volunteering, my first category. Oh, I attended the music concert, the third grade welcome night, Rotary top Luncheon Top 10. We had a year-end admin get-together at De Deanna's home, the MEP graduation party, and a successful hot graduation. Um, it And it was hot, but I do want people to understand 10 o'clock in the morning is, is the direct sun is, is a tough, but we were blessed. Because if, if you had talked to the people from Dorian's and a few others, there was a couple graduations at 2 and 3 o'clock at um, big school stadiums. And so it's tough. Um, communication, the Pulse of Prosser is done for the year. We will start back up in August. Uh, capital levy information is going um, out next week on our website and some social media posts bringing people up to speed. Um, so that's really exciting. Student board members, we had our first board meet, uh, student rep meeting Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, and we just got to go. We're going to have a monthly meeting. Um, the Let me say it right. The second Tuesday of each month after school starts. August is kind of in a funky place because of some things that are going on, but we're going to meet then. Uh, legal, I'm happy to report we have no legal outstanding cases or situations that I'm working with the attorney on. We are moving forward with OPHS, um, and I know I was joking earlier, but I want everybody to understand if you've ever moved, you don't want visitors at your house until the boxes are put away and the things are done. But I do want to bring you up to speed. The outside painting on the south side of that building, and it's kind of the southeast side, but that ramp where the senior parking lot is, that area will be painted in the, uh, if it's yellow, It'll be painted. That's what we're calling it. Um, the Boys and Girls Club are going to do a side. Everybody else is going to participate. We're going to do that. 
We met with fast signs today about district signage um, in different locations and making sure our community knows. Um, we're going to be taking out the gravel and putting in some plants and really trying to up the front there. Um, Boys and Girls Club, if you had driven through the senior parking lot, it had its fence way out. They're just about done with their main dirt work and gravel taking out the parking lot so the fences are going back. We'll wash that parking lot and have some striping done. It'll it'll look nice, but no one can come and visit until mid-July unless you have to have something really important because you don't want to see my house until it looks good. Um, we have started having weekly capital levy meetings with Architects West, Wenaha, Andy, and I. I'm happy to report that the tennis courts have gone out to bid. The bids were posted in the record bulletin, which is our paper of record. The Yakima Herald, the Tri-Cities Herald, and the DJC, which is the Daily Journal of Commerce. We also made personal phone calls to local construction companies to make sure that they knew that it was there. I'm happy to say we're preparing um, the Housel Vestibule and the ADA ramp, and they should go out next week. They may end up being small enough projects that we can do them through what's called the Small Works Roster, because those projects should be under 300000 and we won't have to go through that huge full um, bid process. So that's super exciting uh, for expediting the process. Um, let's see. Then we next down in the next week, we'll be working on bringing in the ADA restrooms at the high school. Um, I just drew a total blank. What else is on that list? Anyhow, so each one, each week when we meet, we're going to be adding one piece to get out. Um, I do want everybody who's listening, um, if you've had to buy any windows, um, window and glass is um, in kind of short supply still. Um, and so the vestibule at the high school is still slated to be ready before the first day of school. But we did get some warning that the storefront type inside walls that we will be using. You know how you have all glass coming into this vestibule? Um, we I should be able to give you some more concrete information at our next meeting about the vestibule and the glass part of it. Um, leadership, we're planning for 24-25. Start of school activities, we're building a calendar, all those kinds of things. The Teachers Association ratified the contract today. I do want to let you know we'll bring it to the board for approval, right? Because it's not effective until you approve it. But um, as you know, I'm very picky on what the contract looks like now and then the red line so you can see it. And because you um, trade contracts about five or six times back and forth, that gets very messy. So we have to make sure we have the original and then just what the contract changes are. So we're hoping to have it to you. Um, the first meeting in July, because it just takes time to make sure it's accurate and I don't want to present something that's not accurate. Um, I do want everybody to know, according to the old timers, you notice I put that in quotes, this is the earliest that's been done ever now, or at least everybody that was in the room. So those, um, some of the people in the room have worked for us for 30 years and we're happy to say that we ra they ratified a three-year contract that already has salary negotiated and it's done in June and everybody got to go home and have a great summer break. Fiscal, we are gonna wait on our budget final presentation until the second July board meeting because we wanna make sure we have all the information from OSPI. And right now it's doing this, um, not meaning like major changes, but they tweak something or they do something and we don't wanna to have to have a budget addendum. So we'll present and then it has to have, be for public review for so many days or weeks and then we'll do our resolution. And the district will be closed on the 19th in observance of Juneteenth. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Board report. Nathan or Frank, would you like to go first? Um, I don't really have anything other than welcome aboard student reps. Uh, thank you for getting involved. Nathan? I might come back to him. Michelle, did you have a report? Not really. I just um, thought graduation was really great. It was my first time shaking all those hands and <laughs> hot as it might have been. Um, it was tolerable. It went quick. So I appreciated that it was Nick, an hour and we were out of the sun. Um, but anyway, I thought it was, I thought it was really beautiful. Yeah. Great speeches. Oh, Jason, 
Would you like to give a report? Oh, yeah, sorry, I couldn't get off mute fast enough, but uh, uh, no, just apologize, couldn't be there. Uh, Lisa, Michelle, thanks for holding the fort down and welcome to the new student board reps. I'll try to do my items quickly. It's just a lot of what's, um, I think since we've been here last, there was the band concert, which was mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. I appreciate they started with the Star Spangled Banner and did it spectacular, had everybody stand for that. It's a wonderful performance. I keep saying band, but the choir also did a really lovely job and we're building our choir program back. The Winnie the Pooh performances, I think were sold out every single one of them and the parents were so proud to have an opportunity to see their kids be adorable on the stage. And I really appreciate that you worked hard to have a partnership with our community theater and make sure that we have arts for a performance for every grade level. I, that means so much to those little kids. Scholarship night, if no one's ever attended scholarship night, it's amazing. Um, and seeing our kids that work so hard and culmination of all their work through the years and the community members that are there that a lot of storytelling time um, and hear the stories of people that you know gave you know their life's work to these scholarship funds and the stewardship that goes into in taking care of that investment and giving it out to students so carefully um, graduation uh, when it ends that um, Tonight in Newtown, Connecticut, was the graduation for the Sandy Hook students that had 20 students missing. Oh. And they were murdered in their classroom in 2014. And I oh. Everybody could have a moment in their heart to think about those families and what's missing from their graduation. And how I think all of us work so hard to make sure that our students are safe every minute of the day in the community and at our schools. And I appreciate everybody that works so hard to make sure that they're safe on the bus, walking to school, and in the building. Our next meeting, we'll have a board meeting in this room, June 18th. At oh, 16th. 17. We oh, ended up. Gosh, that's correct. Monday. Okay. It's Monday, the 17th at 6 p.m. Also, later that week on June 20th at 6 p.m. at the high school will be the dedication um, for the memorial for Marine Sergeant Marvin Hess. That is open to the and that's it. We're adjourned.